Saunas have become incredibly popular on social media for promoting health and longevity. It's true, saunas have many health benefits such as reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, reduced Alzheimer's risk, and reduced all-cause mortality risk. But I personally have been taking the sauna since I was one year old. Yes, I'm born and raised in Estonia, which is a country in the Baltics where saunas have been used for centuries. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the benefits that I've noticed from using the sauna and how you can use it to transform your health. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. The first time my parents took me to the sauna was when I was around one year old. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> you might think, isn't it dangerous? Now, of course, my parents didn't take me to the hottest level of the sauna and just throw a bunch of water onto the stove and make it super hot. The way my parents did it was that they just took me to the sauna room to wash and they just did like a small warmer bath for me as a baby. The temperatures obviously aren't as high as if you normally take the sauna, but it is significantly hotter than a regular room. And it's not really dangerous. Mild hyperthermia, mild elevation in your body temperature, which is the mechanism by which the sauna has health benefits, is safe and fine for all ages of people. And as a baby, I didn't go to the sauna like every day. Usually it might have been like once a week or something like that. I was born and raised in the countryside, so in the countryside, the sauna day is usually once a week. And since then, I've taken a sauna all throughout my childhood, all throughout my teenage years, and now as an adult, I take the sauna several times a week. But why is the sauna good? Like, what are some of the health benefits that you can expect from that? We do have a lot of studies specifically from Finland, and it has been found that using the sauna more than four times a week compared to two to three times a week is associated with 63% lower risk of sudden cardiac death, 63% reduced heart disease mortality, 46% lower risk of hypertension, and 40% reduced all-cause mortality. And these associations aren't explained by the fact that richer people and wealthier people are able to use the sauna. These studies are done in Finland, where there are saunas everywhere. Pretty much everyone has access to the saunas. There are a lot of public saunas that people use. Every apartment building has saunas. And it's said that in Finland, there is at least one sauna per two persons. So all levels of socioeconomic status have access to sauna. And even then you find that the people who use the sauna more often have better health and lower risks of cardiovascular disease and overall mortality. Me as well, I come from a working class background. My father was a policeman. My mother was an English teacher and we weren't like wealthy by any means, but we still had access to the sauna because my grandma had a sauna. My other relatives had a sauna. So we, you know, tripped between the saunas on usually the weekends when I was a child. On top of that, a 2020 study found that frequent sauna bathing can offset the increased risk of death due to low socioeconomic status. So on one hand, the saunas reduce some of the harm that comes from lower socioeconomic status while on the other hand, saunas enhance the positive benefits of certain other healthy lifestyle behaviors like exercise. Sauna has many health benefits in terms of boosting your exercise performance, boosting your exercise recovery, and even enhancing some of the benefits that you get from exercise. So it doesn't really matter what your health status is. It doesn't matter how fit and healthy you already are. It doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. You can still gain a lot of health benefits from the sauna use. Winning. As someone who has used the sauna regularly for 28 years, here are some of the biggest benefits that I've noticed. Number one is better heart rate variability and resting heart rate. My average heart rate variability ranges from 100 to 130, which is very good and much higher than the average person. My resting heart rate during sleep is 38 to 40 and around 40 to 60 during the daytime when I'm not exercising, which is also excellent. Of course, I also exercise. Of course, I sleep well. Of course, I follow a good diet, all of which increase your heart rate variability. But what I've noticed from online is that the people who don't use the sauna, then they do have a slightly lower heart rate variability, even if they are fit and even if they are exercising. So I personally do think that the sauna use has a very beneficial effect on your heart rate variability. And heart rate variability is a very useful tool for assessing your general fitness, your general heart health, and your general recovery. Generally, a higher heart rate variability indicates that your body is in a less stressed out state and it's healthier. Whereas a low heart rate variability indicates that you're either under stress, you're either under infection, or you just lack cardiorespiratory fitness. Doing the saunas combined with a cold plunge is one of the best things for boosting your heart rate variability and improving your sleep even. All of the days that I do the sauna with cold exposure or something like that, then I sleep like a baby. 
What you can also expect from sauna use is less water weight. Of course, the sauna isn't going to make you burn a lot of calories. Generally, you're going to burn maybe like 50 or 100 calories if you do the sauna for 30 minutes. It does increase your heart rate. It increases your energy expenditure to a certain extent, but it's not as effective as doing intense exercise for burning calories. So it's not really like a reliable weight loss tool, but it does certainly boost your cardio performance because of the effects on your heart. What I've also noticed is that the saunas help to retain muscle tissue because of the anti-catabolic effects of the heat shock proteins that get activated under heat. The sauna also increases growth hormone that helps with muscle retention and reducing muscle catabolism. And lastly, the sauna also has a very positive effect on my brain performance and mental health. It has been found that the sauna use is associated with reduced risk of Alzheimer's and dementia. So how much sauna should you do? The research shows that the maximum benefits come from doing the sauna four times times a week or more. You don't see additional benefits above four times a week, but you do increase benefits compared to two to three times a week or once a week. So if you can, then aim for four times a week. That gives you the most maximum benefits. But even once a week is better than nothing at all. I mean, even like once a month is better than nothing at all. So generally what I recommend is that try to get to the sauna as frequently as possible, but you don't need to do it any more than four times a week. So the maximum benefits come from 20 minutes in one session and the minimum temperatures generally around 70 degrees Celsius, which is around 158 or 160 degrees Fahrenheit. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.